David on. And let me just say, as I'm looking at the screen right now, that we are dorks because we are matching. What? Look. I did not plan that. Um, I was dressed first. I'm just going to say, I was dressed first. This was not planned. <laughs> I'm fashion illiterate. Nobody <laughs> takes my word for it anyway. Yeah, so we did not mean to be twinning. I'm twinning it up here. Um, well, actually, we're both wearing pajama pants, too. I do want to know the truth of it. So. Shh, don't tell anyone. That's, that's the beauty of a live stream. You can't see our pants, but we are matching up. shirts. <laughs> but not matching pajamas. No, no, in case you were wondering. So, hi, everyone. Please make sure you say hello as you come on. We would love to say hi back at you. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know Misty had asked some questions actually earlier, so we're going to get to you. Don't go anywhere. We want to get to every questions, um, every question that people have. So feel free to tune in and share this with anyone that you know that needs the information, looking for more assistance and helping themselves level up and start dating healthier people and becoming a healthier person themselves. So it's really awesome because the signature system that we use here at Being Loved Shouldn't Hurt and helping brilliant women date up is it's not just the social aspect. We really look at the physical, mental, mental, emotional. Um, we look at the, which one did I say? Spiritual. You Spiritual. Said social. I said social and yeah. physical part. So four different angles of complete health. So we're really looking at holistic healing when we're doing this. And so, you know, I really come from the direction of the physical part, the emotional part, the social part. And David really is my go-to when it comes to the spiritual aspect. He is he is my guru when it comes to the the come spiritual on. aspect. You know better than that. <laughs> Watch Tony Robbins. I'm not your guru. No, That's true. On. No, it's just where my my head t typically is is you know kind of cruising the outer planets. So you're yeah. a little bit more ground than I'm a little bit more out there. That's, yeah, that's all she means when she says. That. And that's what makes us the good yin and yang together. But you know, it's really great to have your best friend that you get to have sex with. <laughs> He's like, Facebook uh -oh, uh -oh. Live after hours. <laughs> but it's Very great to be able to have that best friend that like, I mean, there's no one else that I would rather hang out with but you. And you bring out the best in me and, and you help me think of things that I would have not thought of in another way. I might not always see it right away, um, but he'll bring up things and I'm like, oh, okay. I hadn't thought about it that way because he definitely is more of that spiritual aspect and I'm a little bit more of the grounded. So we kind of level each other yeah, out. Yeah, and she keeps me from, you know, floating off the face of the planet. So that's that's good too. <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Yeah, it is. It's nice to have a best friend that you actually get to date and be married to. Oh, yeah, that's right. She put a ring on it. Yeah, so. I did. And we get to still date. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, when you have two kids, the date nights are few and far between. It's a little bit different. That's a whole different uh, series. <laughs> we could talk about that anyway. some other time. So we wanted to come on. We've got some actual tips that we would like to share with you. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's so much information that we that we have that we would like to give to everybody. Yeah, I just want to insert real quick for the record, for, for what it's worth, my own path of, of you know, self-discovery and healing and all that has, has been... Has not been linear, and and I know a lot of times we kind of figure like, oh, we want to set up steps and, and plan moving forward. I have this straight line march from where we're at to some type of enlightenment. I know for me it didn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I you know we talked about doing a Facebook Live, and obviously Steph is on the channel all the time. But my approach is kind of like you know whatever comes up because it could be the smallest unplanned discussion that you know, um, gives someone on here a little bit of insight into something, you know, a different way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of all for, you know, whatever works. I know for the sake of having some structure, you wanted to have some, some kind of, you know, specific questions or bullet points. Um, but I also know you encourage people to ask questions. So, um, sometimes, you know, having a male perspective on, on some of these challenges mm -hmm. or spiritual questions or whatever can be helpful. Um, so yeah, you know, if you want to, you want to go to the, the group for questions if you want to throw something else out there well healing is really never linear so when we start thinking we're moving forward sometimes we've got to move back four steps to get back to moving in the right direction again mm -hmm. and I found that for myself and of course for our clients um, when they work with us and that's why it's so great to have coaches that actually have are walking the walk because they know what some of the struggles are and we are very well aware of how we feel like you know sometimes it'd be frustrating because we're moving forward and then all of a sudden something happens and we we think we're back where we are but if we have the right support we're not we don't go all the way back there with the right support having an outside person to share more of an objective uh, perspective and also help us stay accountable for the, the choices that we're, you know, now committed to making 
uh, can be really helpful because most of the reason we stay the same is because we're just, you know, creatures of habit. And sometimes it takes, uh, you know, a cheerleader, someone in our corner to help, you know, keep us from going back into that rut. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just really quick about me. I am a um, transformational coach who helps really women date up. That's my specialty. Um, David is a Reiki master teacher and Psyche practitioner. Along, facilitator. Facilitator, maybe. sorry. Amongst the list of other things that we get to do. Hi, Sharon, and hi, everybody that's coming on. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to share with you or to ask David more about was to talk about how um, we want to get leverage on ourselves and how important that is in the healing process. Well, we were just kind of, um, you know, brainstorming ideas literally like right before we came on this on this video. Um, but, you know, when we talk about um, difficulty in changing, making changes in our lives and uh, questioning why we just kind of fall back into old patterns. Um, it's been my experience that the reason we don't change is because we don't have sufficient leverage on ourselves. Um, things may be bad, but on some level they really haven't gotten bad enough yet. That's why a lot of times people don't make the changes they need to make in their lives until they hit rock bottom and there's no avoiding it. So, um, you know, the discussion we might have is, is you know, do we, do we really have the leverage? Are we identifying positive feelings, enough positive feelings to enough of the right things and negative feelings to enough of the wrong things to where we get the leverage to where we can actually take the steps, um, find a coach, commit to a plan? Um, because if we don't get leverage on ourselves, we, I think we just wind up falling back into these old patterns and nothing really changes. I was just actually watching um, another coach is a business coach. Um, she's my mentor for business. And they were talking about how people that are doing very well, very successful in their business, they, um, they make a decision and they go for it. And they don't let anything else get in the way. So sometimes it might not be something that you want to do, but it's a decision that you know you need to make because it's the best decision for you. And that's what I think is a, is a big issue is that when we lose trust for ourselves, when we don't um, maybe have the right support or haven't had the right background, we start questioning our ability to make decisions and then we go backwards. And then instead of like, the decision becomes the indecision and we end up losing the momentum because we don't have the right support. Well, that's where procrastination comes from, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, again, getting leverage is uh, you can think about, you know, developing a passion for something, whether it's for something that you want to that you dream of pursuing or a, a passion for just your own healing journey um, you know the the leverage that comes with being passionate about something can't be overstated there's a big thing in the group that we see a lot is where people are scared of changing and we were talking about how and this and I when David brought this up I said yeah that is totally on point is talking about how, and this is kind of point number two, is that we, we stay trapped for a variety of different reasons. And then there's almost a secondary reason for it that keeps us stuck there. So do you want to talk more about that? Well, it's something that's come up um, in a number of teachings that, that I've you know explored and, and my own work as well, um, especially with Psyche, which is the high-speed mindset change. The thing that is worth examining are secondary benefits. In other words, um, rules that we've kind of set up to give ourselves rewards for staying the same. Mm -hmm. um, for example, you might uh, not have a belief that you have the ability to affect a real uh, positive change in your life. So um, you may you know, the secondary benefit of staying in a, a toxic relationship, for example, with someone who, who dulls your shine, so to speak, is that uh, you have the benefit of not having to face up to this deep sense of inadequacy, right? So that's an example of a secondary benefit. And these things, again, they're really just constructs of our own mind. They're just rules that we've set up, little, little you know, stimulus response uh, circuits and, and reward systems that give us maybe a little bit of something good a little bit of peace, a little bit of uh, you know certainty, or familiarity, or comfort, 
um, when in the bigger scheme of things, they're roadblocks to our, our transformation and our, our ultimate success. When you start hearing something that resonates with you, please give us some thumbs up, hearts, you know, some something to know, or just give us your, you know, or your questions, response. Comments. Or question comments. We, you know, we'd love to hear what resonates for you. But I think that that is, it's a really hard pill to swallow, is when we say to ourselves, hey, I'm not changing, and it's because of me, and it's because of something that I am comfortable with. And what I say all the time is I'm comfortable in the discomfort. So we might say that we really don't like something, but it's not really until we really, really don't like it, that we're, we, we can't take it anymore, that we suddenly will make the change. Because when I was in my ex relationship, I mean, things got really, really bad. And I was saying how much I couldn't stand it, saying how much I couldn't stand it, but I was staying. And then it finally took, you know, and sometimes it's that little bit, you know, it's that little tiny bit that just enough to push push you a little bit further to say, hey, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Because it's not the camel's back. Exactly. And it's such a good statement to say because it's that little bit more where we say, I'm not doing this anymore. And I have clients that I see that with all the time where they've dealt with something for years and then all of a sudden it seems like something mundane and now all of a sudden they're done. And you know, taking that ability to and kind of lowering that bullshit ability, like the ability to deal with other people's crap. Some of us are trained so well, and I was. I was trained really, really well in dealing with other people's crap. Can you believe that? Well, you kind <laughs> of got like, paid for it at one point, I think, right? The, the hotline that Well, you working got. at a crisis hotline, but that wasn't people's crap. I mean, learning how to deal with, because that was, that was helping people that as a crisis hotline. But helping people with their crap. True, so but I mean, like, what I mean, like, say that with like my family or friends or relationships or you know any of those kinds of things. Well, kind of getting back to the point, I I pulled from uh, it's actually a little nugget of wisdom from the the Tao Te Ching. Um, only when your sickness becomes sick will your sickness disappear, right? And and basically, I interpret that as you you got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you can feel sick, but if you have these secondary benefits and these, and you may not even be conscious of them, but these little rewards, these little um, counterintuitive, uh, you know, benefits that you get from staying the same, mm -hmm. you're, you're not really, you're not really ready to change. There's still some, something appealing, something alluring about the, the old you uh, that causes you to keep going back to it. Because honestly, if you were really fed up, you'd probably start, you know, even if you didn't know how to move forward, you'd try something different. You'd do something different. So it, it's important to consider, you know, shoot, even before you, you go all out on a, a new pursuit, you know, are, are you really ready to let the past go? Or or is there something unresolved that, that kind of still holds some, some appeal to you. And the great thing working with us, we can help you figure out what some of that, what you know, the unresolved stuff that's there, because that's what it is. It's, I thought that I was much healthier than I was. I mean, I really did. And, and doing all the work that I've done, I realized, oh, I had a lot of stuff that I was um, holding back on, or I was not dealing with at all. You know, I was the one who could deal with everything. I was, I had, you know, got to school full time and worked full time, and I was the oldest in my family, and I took care of everybody, and I was the caretaker and caregiver to everybody. No one has to worry about me. No one has to worry about me. So I was taking care of everybody else, and I wasn't taking care of myself at all. And I know some of you can give me some thumbs up and hearts because I know that that's happening for all of you as well. We take care of everybody else. We don't take care of ourselves. Part of us are angry that we're taking care of everybody else and they're not dealing with their own stuff. And then here we are with the burden of taking care of everybody else, but we are also not dealing with our own shit. We're not. We're dealing with everybody else's and it's an excuse. And I, if someone had told me that 10 years ago, I would have been like, it's not an excuse. I'm taking care of myself. But it is. It's an excuse to have all this drama and have all of this stuff so that we don't have to deal with our own issues because that's... It's uncomfortable. It's icky. It's it's not what well, it's not fun to say, "Hey, let me look in that mirror and see where I messed up." It's much easier to look in the mirror and say, "Hey, you're messed up. Look at how messed up you are. Look at that." Instead of saying, "Hey, wait a minute. What's going on with me that I keep attracting these same types of people and having the same kinds of issues happen over and over and over again?" Well, a change is scary, but you know, when you look at 
at the end of your life if you want to face up to a reality of you not uh, facing your challenges and, and overcoming them, you know, not changing can be a lot more scary. And, and that's, you know, something that everyone as an individual has to, you know, reconcile. Otherwise, again, it's just going to be more of the same. And then, you know, it's the recipe for a half lived life. Which is a whole other thing, because then we were at the end of the your life, and you look back and you say, "I lived a half lived half lived life," and I can look back and say, "It's all their fault." We're stuck in victim mode, you know. It's getting your power back and saying, "Hey, it's it was our responsibility to make the changes." I have a a question here. So why do we do this? To let it to let it be till we reach our max threshold. Why do you think? Why is it that you think that we have to get to our max threshold? And everyone's threshold is going to be different. Because if we were brought up in families where people had to deal with a lot of different issues, if you had alcoholism, mental illness, um, a death in the family of a close family member, I mean, the list can go on and on and on. But if you've had to deal with being an adult before you were ready as a child, then your ability to deal with stuff is way greater than people that did not have those types of issues growing up. So you, your ability to... Um, I, I had coping skills. I had so many co coping skills and they were not necessarily healthy. They helped me get through certain things, but they were almost too good at helping me deal with things. So I think the question was, why do we have to wait till things get really bad? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's um, a question of our beliefs about our worth and our capability. Because if you thought you were worthy of the best things that life has to offer. And if you believe that you were capable of making those changes, you wouldn't wait until things got really bad before you made a change. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be my answer to that question. Um, the reason why we wait until we hit rock bottom is because, you know, we don't believe we're worthy or capable. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we work on with clients mm -hmm. is because the, the self-esteem issue is such a big issue in there is that we don't believe that we deserve I didn't think I deserved healthy relationships. I didn't think it was for someone like me. I thought it was for some other person. It was some made up thing by Hollywood that there wasn't actually people that liked each other and that were happy together. I thought that was, that was something somewhere else. And it's funny too, not funny, haha, but the fact that we you know, frame our whole existence around beliefs that weren't even ours originally. Like mm -hmm. most of the stuff, these, you know, these, these uh, programs were, were handed down. You know, I, I think of the meme that flew by recently, right? That, you know, we're not responsible for the programming we received as a child, but as an adult, we're 100% responsible for, for changing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it really starts with a, uh, an increasing sense of awareness. That is a, a willingness to actually look at our lives, you know, examining our lives, um, thinking about what we think about on a regular basis. You know, these, these unconscious patterns, bring them to the light of our consciousness. And then, you know, if you give yourself, even just at, yeah, at the beginning, a little bit of time to kind of pour over these things, look them over, you can start to say, okay, hey, yeah, I recognize a pattern here. Um, it hasn't led to a greater sense of peace and, and fulfillment. You know, let me start exploring ways to, to change that. And that kind of, kind of brings us into the next or the last question or the last, the last thing we wanted to talk about was um, the importance of asking ourselves the right questions. Yeah, so it, it occurred to me that the quality of the questions we ask ourselves is directly related to the quality of the answers that we get. And, you know, this kind of came up in discussion before we got on the video because a lot of times the sort of temperature of, of the, the group and, and these, these groups, you know, people who are looking for a forum to express their frustrations, they're looking for help, whatever, you know, a lot of times... Um, the questions and the stories and the, uh, you know, the irritants, all these things, they, they kind of are, are on more of a superficial level. Um, and, you know, it's, the, the question then becomes, are we, are we looking at the root cause of our problems? Now, you know, when I think about the quality of the questions we ask, ultimately it comes down to the hard questions. And make no mistake, you know, and, and I'll say this as props to everybody who's, who's watching or involved in this community, it, it takes a fair amount of courage. Um, so big ups to everybody for, for you know, kind of, you know, catching your breath and starting to dust yourself off and, 
and reach out, you know, even if you don't know what you're reaching for, mm -hmm. just, you know, you, you're, you're in a good place. You're with a community of, of people who, um, you know, while they may not always be like-minded, so to speak, um, they, they have, uh, you know, you all have a, a common thread and it's the same one that Steph and I share, which was an understanding or at least an inkling that life can be more than what it, it seems to have been for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's important, but again, it takes a lot of courage to really look at how screwed up you are. And, and, and that one makes me want to kind of insert the, the idea that, um, as part of this healing process, you want to be mindful of your tendency to feel bad about feeling bad mm -hmm. because it's one thing to explore how fucked up you are. It's another thing to begin to forgive yourself for that. Mm -hmm. um, and whether it's with yourself or your children or anyone who you're responsible for, when you find yourself in a mess, okay, acknowledge it, but don't leave yourself in the mess. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I was just talking with a, with a client earlier, you know, pain is natural and it's a part of life. Suffering is pain that we choose to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So the big questions, right, the, the, the higher quality questions might be something like, you know, why am I really holding on to the past? You know, and, and so far as people identify with their problems, change can be scary because if they haven't imagined a new way to be, they could literally be facing oblivion. You know, mm -hmm. the unknown, the, the, the complete destruction of their, their old mindset. Um, look, I, you know, I'm telling you, sometimes losing your mind is the best thing that could have happened. Because, uh, you know, if your mind is, a, is just a collection of negative mindsets, what are you holding on for? Nostalgia? You know? I went through a depression. I mean, it was everything should have been actually getting better. And instead, I just, it was that that mirror up to the face where I was like, oh, okay, the one thing in common has been me. And so I kept looking for that nine shining armor to come and I had to realize like, hey, I've got some really big issues that I need to work on. You know, and that's one of the things that, you know, that, that David was talking about. I mean, in, in the group and in other groups that we have, there's a lot of people that are saying, you know, is this normal? Is this okay? Is this, well, you know, there is, first of all, there's really no such thing as normal. I think maybe that's like a, a bad word anyway. Yeah. But there's there's right for you. So like when I teach brilliant women how to date up, it's about finding the right partner for you. I mean, David and I are wonderful partners for each other. And we might not have been as good for anybody else. I would think not. Oh, well, you definitely ruined me. So this... I... <laughs> Yeah, it's got to work out because, you know, you you know that this is great. And I know yes, it's great. We're locked in. We're locked, we're locked in. in. But, you know, it's one of those things that once you have that right partner and you see how how you actually accelerate through good things together instead of merely surviving and constantly asking yourself, is this okay? Is this normal? Was this right? You know, when he did this, when she did that, you know, we, we do all these things that are a waste of time and breath. And when you really are crystal clear on asking yourself the right questions of, what, what type of relationship do I want? Who do I want my partner to be? What do I want them to look like? And not just physical looks, but their whole you know, values and morals. And do I want them to travel? Do I want them to be more homebody? Do I want them to go out? You know, there's all these things that we ask. We start dating, we don't even know the answers to those questions. Then we find someone that shows us a nice time. And then all of a sudden that's the person that we're, we're with. And then we try to force it to work and that it was never really meant to work out to begin with. So really asking the right questions of who am I, what do I want, and what do I, what am I looking for in a healthy partner is really, was really key. Well, that kind of gets to the, the deeper heart of it, which is the extent to which you base your happiness on somebody else's rules. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, I know there are people out there, you know, and the other thing is, is getting caught up in labels other people's rules and labels and expectations of how things should be. Like, am I codependent? Who cares? I have to get married before I'm 35. I have to have a child before this age. I have to do this, I have to do that. And these are all imposed by whom? <laughs> well, you know, again, we can try to understand things by using words and we can try to craft happiness by looking at what other people are doing. But again, at, at the end of it all, at the end of our lives, you know, we're not going to be able to say, oh, well, you know, you know, my parents told me it was, you know, a good idea to, this is to marry this guy. Because, yeah. what I mean, seriously, you know, one, one of the things that I've adopted um, as, as one of my rules is that you make your own rules. 
Um, ultimately, you make your own rules. And, and yeah, we can follow the path of people who've gone before us. I mean, if, if you're not particularly imaginative and creative, yeah, maybe you, maybe you just start opening your eyes and, and surrounding yourself with people who are where you want to be mm-hmm. in any area of life. I mean, again, it's not to say that you have to follow the exact path they did. You know, my grandma always used to say, you know, there are as many ways to the top of the mountain as there are people to walk them. Mm-hmm. But you know what? If if you don't want to, you know, blaze a trail and, and try to hack down redwoods with a machete, take a look at, you know, other people who've accomplished certain things and just begin to surround yourself with with people who are vibrating at a higher level. I mean... You don't have to have it all figured out, but you, you got to do something different. And, uh, you know, like attracts like. And uh, my hope for this group is that we get enough people on an upward trend um, doing this work, you know, taking advantage of, of the resources that we have available. Sign up for Steph's free coaching, her group coaching, her one-on-one coaching, her retreat in Costa Rica. Like, holy cow. By the way, that's where we went on our uh, honeymoon was Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not invited to this one coming up because it's women only. I'll get over it. <laughs> Tears on my pillow. Um, but, I mean, shoot, just to see that, that country again is amazing. And uh, Well, and just to have what you, exactly what you're talking about, people vibrating on a higher frequency. I mean, this is going to be a group of women who are all looking to increase their frequency. Yeah, and you gotta you got to do that. Again, even if you are just kind of starting out, maybe if you're still in the thick of a toxic situation and don't even know how you can get out. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the most challenging ones that that I can think of, and I see enough of it on this group, is people who have kids with Mm -hmm. someone who is just not right. Like, Mm -hmm. that that has got to be so tough. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can recognize that, but at the same time, you know, you walk your path one foot, in front of the other one step at a time and um, even if you're in a challenging situation that others may have no inkling of of like how to deal with um, it's so important to surround yourself and and create that support structure surround yourself with people who are at least headed the same direction you know Mm -hmm. up and out of the the valley of death and into you know something something better and um, just because you maybe haven't done that historically, you haven't seen a lot of examples of people who have transformed their lives and achieved lives beyond their wildest dreams, doesn't mean that, you know, you shouldn't start exposing yourself to it. Mm -hmm. Um, For God's sakes, do something, you know what I mean? Again, the the resources we offer here and the the coaching that Steph can offer, um, combined with some of the work that I do, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, had remarkable uh, impact on a lot of people's lives Mm -hmm. and you know it can start with something really small Um, just being part of this group and this community can can be a huge thing staying engaged keeping an open mind um, letting a little bit of the positive vibes and and positive influence rub off on you you Mm -hmm. know learning to okay hey maybe you know maybe you're just kind of you know, like uh, shadowing, just kind of looking at the room and, and you over, oversee or overhear a discussion about how someone decides, okay, maybe I can be a little bit more kind to myself. You know, may, maybe that little positive tidbit rubs off on you. Mm-hmm. You know, something, do do something, do anything, and, you know, um, just keep it moving in that direction. And keep in mind that for the next, uh, we're going to be on week number three on Wednesday for the um, master, master class, Brilliant Women Dating Up. So it's going to be uh, session three on Wednesday, and then we'll have three more sessions after that. And then we're going to have this really amazing day with all sorts of information as like the culmination of all those weeks. So that's going to be coming up really, really soon. So for those of you who are looking to step it up and you're looking to surround yourself with those positive, brilliant, beautiful women, this one's going to be more geared towards women. I'm sure David will have more things geared maybe a little bit more towards men, but you know, we get to have the yin and the yang. Like we get to have, we get to teach you from our different perspectives, from the male perspective, the female perspective, and then our own um, learnings and teachings that we have to share with all of you. So we we have such great information here to share that with you for those of you looking for that positive spin. Well, you know the the information's out there, and and you provide a ton of content, and you know you could well attest I could talk for hours and fill years with a, a bunch of stuff too. But you know I I think. Um, Information and tools are critical, um, but but the inspiration to kick up your feet and do something a little bit different, um, you know, supported by 
the you know the positive vibes of other people who who can empathize with you is probably worth more than any information because you can get the information that you need um but um you know if you don't have the inspiration to go after it i mean i i use the you know the, the expression all the time you can hand somebody a gold brick and they'd complain how heavy it is mm -hmm. you know there could be a, a little gem here or there in this in this community in this group you know there could be a lot of a lot of good stuff but mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're if you're not willing to at least start by admitting that, you know, what you've been doing isn't working. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know if there's anybody like that in this group. I don't think there are any, you know, tire kickers. I mean, I you know, I haven't been as immersed in the community as, as you have. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you're in, you're in a good place. Take advantage of, of the resources. And, you know, this, this certainly wasn't meant to be a, a sales pitch, this video or anything like that. But um, in the, let's see. Probably, I guess we could say four or five years that you know I've seen you uh, evolve down this path of, of being of service to others. Um, I, I've seen what started out as you know just passionate ideas discussed over a glass of wine when we were dating to what like a 6,500 plus um, you know member community, mm -hmm. um, a book published, the second book coming out soon, um, you know, in uncountable you know numbers of podcasts and interviews and and I mean just so much work that you put into it um mm -hmm. you know Steph obviously has has a lot of passion for this and and that's a result of her having succeeded in um you know starting off on that on that path to to healing um so take advantage of her knowledge her her wisdom that she's gained her her boundless compassion and I'm not just saying that to pump you up but I mean that's that's all I see um I mean, you know, there can't tell you how many times I want to be like, babe, get off your phone. And then I realize she's like responding to one of you guys. So I'm like, I do you think. Um, so, yeah, take take advantage. And, I give you your attention, too. Uh, yes, I, I get five minutes here. And there. <laughs> are, they, are the kids asleep? Well, yeah, <laughs> that's more the kids than anything else. Yes. Well, um, so Ramona said very motivational. Thank you. And Nala said really good. Thank you both. So does anybody have any questions for David or myself? Yeah, Feel know. free to reach out. Any questions? I'm so appreciative of the fact that you were able to come and hang out. Um, Sharon said, yes, Stephanie has helped me so much. Yeah, Sharon is, is one of my star pupils. I, I love hearing updates from Sharon. She's like, Whoosh. she, you know, and again, it's just, it's just that thing of, you know, sometimes it's those little pieces that really just keep you moving in the forward momentum. Yeah, so Sharon, uh, stay engaged, stay involved, you know, keep sharing the, the good juju. Mm -hmm, definitely. Now, anybody have any questions or anything they want to share? And of course, we didn't say this before, but you know, it goes without mention that if you are watching this as in the replay, then feel free to ask those questions. We will come back and answer whatever questions. If you want to specifically ask David a question, just tag you know, me in just tag him so he can answer it specifically. Or you can tag me or whatever. Yeah. So, but either of us, we'll, we'll go back and answer whatever questions that you have. So, I'll give everybody another minute or so to ask their questions, but I'm just going to throw out there just again. You know, uh, Wednesdays we're having the Brilliant Women Dating Up Masterclass series. We're in week number three, um, starting Wednesday or this Wednesday, which is only two days away. And we have our wonderful, like so exciting, trip to Costa Rica we just talked about, but yeah, so cool. In. Sorry. Yeah, he was going to come, and then we I, we were like, wait a minute, who's going to watch the kids? And yeah, yeah, they don't fit in the carry-on. Yeah, they, they don't. So David was nice enough to let me go on this one, but we're going to start making some more regular. Hi, Thomas. Oh, hi. We're going to start making some more regular trips, so you know, keep those, keep putting those pennies aside and make sure that you're coming up on one of our trips <laughs> because there's going to be some really epic adventures on these, on these trips. So please yeah, make sure you keep those. Where in the world is Stephanie? Yeah, I love traveling, so might as well go to really cool places and help all of you at the same time. That's and then stuff. what else? Was there any other questions that anybody has? Hello. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas is one of our, yeah. He's, he's one of our buddies. You know, and again, what we were saying before, talking about having healthy people in your circle. Oh, man. That's a that's a great example. You yeah. Know what I mean, when you get to as lofty a level as Steph and I, nudge, nudge, nudge. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's hard to find people that can that can really inspire you. And, and uh, I'll put you on blast, Thomas. I mean, this this guy and, and uh, his wife, Brooke, Steph's BFF. Um, these, these, are, these are people that just 
exude like they are dripping with goodness and you uh, can't help but get some of it on you when you when you hang out with them yeah so uh, having the right people that you surround yourself will help make things better in your life in your business whatever it is that you are doing with yourself so you really want to make sure that you have those core people that you leave and you just feel energized you don't want to leave someone and, and be like Ugh, I'm so drained. You know, you really want to have those people that make get, get you interested. Life's too short. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's why I have a, a pretty small circle of, of friends. You know, my time is valuable, and and mm -hmm. I've that's one of the things I'm most grateful for is the realization that I don't have to waste my time with with people who who don't appreciate me. And this isn't a matter of putting myself on a pedestal. That's it's why just we like, hang out a lot. Well, yes, thank goodness we get along because <laughs> it would be awful otherwise. All right, so Ramona said, if I can figure out work hours replacements, I really want to make Costa Rica. Yeah, Ramona, you really need to make Costa Rica. I think it's going to be such a great opportunity for you to really kick that healing up another notch. Um, and for those of you who are, you know, are not sure about it, I mean, we have farm to table, vegan food. Um, we're going to be doing yoga every single morning, meditation every single night. We have different adventures to waterfalls. We're doing zip lining. We're going to learn dancing, salsa dancing, which is going to be so cool. We've got some other fun things planned. I'm sorry. It sounds really sorry, cool. I'm so sorry. I know. I, I'm it's going to be so fun. I'm just hearing about and this And it's going to be so fun with all the ladies. I feel like when I was younger, I, I didn't have as many girlfriends. I, I was like, I don't know, I was afraid of women. And I since, as I've gotten older, I was. I was weirdly afraid of and women. And now you're a leader of women. And now, now, and now here I am. I got. I realized what some of that programming was, and so women. We are. I'm just so amazed by the strong, powerful women that that are around, and how many of us, you know, don't really shine ourselves. But yeah, I mean, the the fact that we're going to be hanging out is going to be amazing. There you go. Oh, yeah, so easier to just book the trip and let work and responsibilities adjust around instead of the other way around. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. If you feel like you want to do it, you got to just jump wow. because you figure it out. I mean, that's, that's actually kind of how I decided to do it. Is I had it's like feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the, when I jumped out of an airplane, you just go. Um, but when I booked it, the people that were doing the event with actually contacted me, and I was looking for places to do some speaking events. And they contacted me and they said, "Hey, do you want to do an event?" And I was like, well, "I'm not really sure that I was going to do that." And then we started going back and forth, and they were so cool. I was like, "Yes, we're doing an event with you." And then we just, I just jumped in. So that was that was pretty much how that happened because I loved their vibe, I loved everything they were doing, and I said, "I have to just jump in and do it." So if you're feeling that, you know, you've got to just go for it. Um, even jury duty gets put off if you have a trip already booked. Well, there you go. See, um, Chris said, "I need. I know I need to push through my anxiety and panic issues and socialize or interact with more positive people." So I'm working. Uh, hold on. I'm working on that. Just getting showered and dressed is an exhausting task. Yeah, and Chris, I know you are in a very difficult place right now. Um, you know, if there's ever, if there's any chance that you could make it on the trip, I think this would be life changing for you because the amount of positivity and just healing that's going to be going on in this retreat is going to be epic. So, well, just you know, what uh, parlay your your the courage that I talked about before having here, and and uh, again, you know, you're you're going to have to do something along the lines of, of what you might previously have thought was, was impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they say nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, if you, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always gotten. And mm -hmm. I know that sounds cliche and, and maybe it is, but, um, you know, joining a Facebook group is, is, is great. You know, um, if you're interested in learning more about this, um, but I don't think people make real changes when they're interested in things. Or when it's easy. Well, that's just the thing, you know. And, and uh, again, it's it's easy to commit yourself to something that's easy. Mm -hmm. um, but commitment, I think, like a lot of things, like forgiveness, uh, for example, is most important when it's the hardest to do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, it takes a lot of courage to take these steps. It may take a lot of courage for you to you know, spend money on a coaching program or a retreat when, you know, you know, that Netflix subscription has to be paid for or whatever, <laughs> like, you know, challenge yourself, face the fear, do something different. And, uh, and the, the benefits are, are many, many fold. And I can say genuinely that when I left my first marriage, <clears throat> I was scared to death. I knew that I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I knew that I didn't want to continue my life down that path, but I was still scared to death. I still went through a depression. I still had so many other hurdles that I had to jump through. And then 
I get to have my prize at the end. Oh, oh geez. Don't make me sound like a trophy husband. <laughs> oh, well, of course. Yeah, but, but really, I mean, I wouldn't have gotten to here had I not acted in spite of the fear. And there were so many different reasons that I could have stayed. But, you know, there's, you've got to just feel it. Know the discomfort's there. Know that it's there. Your fear is there trying to protect you, but it's protecting you in a way that's actually not protecting you. And you've got to act in spite of it to get to the other side. Sometimes you keep pushing. It gets a little bit uncomfortable, so you, you fall back. And that's what a lot of us keep doing. Instead, if you just push that little bit harder, feel a little bit more pain, do a little bit more digging, you're going to get through that wall and get to the other side. And take advantage of the, uh, the support structure uh, um, that you have in this community to help hold you up but you know I've always kind of felt like when faced with the the worst seemingly the worst of the biggest challenges of life the the only way 